Hopkins it is at the lower level uh, adjacent to Chestnut Street uh, and then the stairs to the upper level there. Uh, alternatively, there is a uh, sidewalk, a typical streetscape sidewalk uh, that'll, that'll bring you around the south end of the site and, and wrap around the building to that to that plaza area uh, and, and for access over to the station itself. Uh, uh, Colin might be able to speak to whether there's any interior access for, or, or opportunity, but uh, there is access around the south side. So. Okay, thank you. I'll raise it again when we weren't talking about the end here. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hines, you mentioned that the garage access off of Chestnut Street was one floor, and then the garage access up around the top section closer to the train station is another entrance. Is one for the residents of the building and one just for commuters? And are they are they connected in through drive? Can you drive from one floor to the other floor? You can't. Uh, no, you can't drive from one floor to the other. But uh, so they're they're connected via stairs and an elevator uh, shaft. Uh, and I think when we speak to the interior layout, uh, we we'll speak to the opportunity for which which floor might be best suited for uh, each user group, but I, I believe the commute the sixty spaces for the commuter portion that we're providing is on the upper story of, of the garage, uh, in closer proximity to the station. Henry Potter for Benadryl. I'll just add Venture correct at sixty commuter spaces on the third level garage. And the lower two levels are predominantly residential but with some commercial use on, on the upper level as well and potentially in the lower two levels. But commuter spaces are strictly located on the third floor garage. Okay, and then not on that exterior blacktop, if you will, place. No. Okay, no. thank you. Is is there, any op uh, is there any space designated for public use? Or the train station. The commuter parking spaces are effectively public use. Somebody can go in and okay. Take I'm I'm thinking more in terms of green space, leisure space. I, I can cover that later on in the architectural portion of the proposal. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot. The presentation. There's a, a fair amount there that will shed light on that. I think Vince is covering grading and engineering aspects that have to do with traffic flow and drainage and that sort of stuff. Appreciate that. Thank you. Vince, do you have any more on uh, drainage? Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, I have a little bit more here. I, I was just going to move to the zoning plan uh, quick. Uh, you know, we provided all the pertinent zoning data that Adams used uh, and, and indicated why why we're going forward with the historic incentives. Uh, you know, further though, we're we're implementing DPW standards around the streetscape package. Uh, and and drive aprons. Uh, the streetscape itself will really act as a continuation of the patterns uh, in place at 1 and 11 Chestnut Street. Uh, and then as you go through the courtyard spaces, we, we'll get into uh, a more private development-like uh, material choice, uh, which uh, I'm sure Eric will, Eric Rains will speak to uh, in a little bit greater detail. Um, the, the courtyards, uh, as well as interior and rooftop amenity areas, uh, will represent the areas of required public and, and, and private open spaces and, and rec area. Uh, and then it's worth noting while I'm on this page here, our commercial loading space is accessed via the, the lower level as this is adjacent to uh, some of those commercial spaces. And trash will be a, kind of a porter system where on the third level of the garage, we have a trash room that will be uh, portered out to the driveway and, and a garbage truck will be able to access from uh, Henry Street. Uh, 
and just hit, hitting on the utilities, uh, the, the project will be serviced by uh, local water, gas, and electric uh, telephone cable connections, uh, most of which come via connections in Chestnut Street. We do have some electric upgrades in the area that uh, include transformers at the west end of the site and an electric room on the west end of the building. Uh, sanitary sewer is proposed to connect to an existing 12-inch main within Chestnut Street, uh, utilizing some existing flow information provided by WPCA. We had studied uh, the, the downstream sewer system extending through Ooh. to Raymond Street uh, and found that the sewers in Raymond Street, which are operating at the the fullest capacity based on uh, proximity to the site are operating between 35 and 62% of capacity when you include the proposed development, uh, resulting in a reserve capacity uh, between 38 and 65%. Uh, and that's uh, well within the requirements of WPCA as their, their normal is to request that at least 25% reserve capacity be uh, available upon a completion of a project. Uh, and then just uh, to speak on stormwater management, uh, under existing conditions, we studied an area of approximately three and a half acres, and that includes the project site, uh, a, a portion of the station, uh, train station lot, tributary to the drainage system, and portions of right of way in Chestnut and Henry Street. Uh, in total, there's about 2.7 acres of that is impervious coverage, uh, 1.3 of that then being on the actual project site uh, and split really into two basins because we have that upper level at the existing station uh, and, and the lower level, which is the parking lot there to the south of the 11 Chestnut building. So we, we studied two basins there. Ultimately, all the stormwater runoff uh, is tributary to the intersection of Chestnut Street and Henry Street, where it then continues flowing via pipe flow uh, to the south. Uh, with that said, there, there are no formal uh, water quality improvements on site, uh, just a, a series of catch basins and manholes. Um, that otherwise would would get to that system in the right of way. So for proposed conditions, uh, we're increasing coverage from the 1.3 acres to about 1.9 acres. Uh, and of that, about 75% is uh, going to receive a water quality treatment uh, via underground infiltration, uh, which are just uh, uh, kind of concrete boxes underground that are able to store water, but then also help exfiltrate that water back into the ground uh, or via oil grit separate. So those systems are in the lower courtyard uh, and that captures some roof area and, and the courtyard area. And then we have a infiltration system in the upper level uh, capturing uh, driveway area and, and courtyard area as well. The bypass areas to that, the the, the other 25%, if you will, is public sidewalk area that would otherwise sheet flow into the public right away and uh, a small portion of the roof, which is less likely to provide some of the heavier pollutant loads. Uh, and with inclusion of the stormwater management systems, the peak rates of runoff and the stormwater, you know, the volume of stormwater runoff are reduced in each of the studied storm events, including the 100-year event. Uh, and with that, DPW has reviewed uh, the site plans and drainage report and provided their conditional approval. I'm I'm open to uh, questions. Uh, otherwise, I'm happy to pass it over. Alan? Thank you, Adam.
So first, just thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be in front of you again, uh, commissioners and city staff. Um, this is uh, the third phase and fourth building in this district. I'm going to try to be brief but inclusive. Um, I'm Colin Groth here, Senior Associate at Binefield Architecture. Uh, I've been with the firm since 2005, about 18 years now. So um, the firm, as many of you know, we pride ourselves in uh, where we are. So our place in New England are, that inspires our designs. We draw on the culture, the simple forms and patterns to make functional beauty. And we like to try and respect the heritage of the areas where we work with our material choices and uh, sure. still find room to innovate uh, and diverge where, where applicable. Um, just some overall neighborhood context really quick. Um, this area is kind of the, the culmination of what's been a, a, about a, a four and a half acre uh, urban parcel redevelopment, uh, including uh, parcels on Chestnut Street and the 10 Monroe Street parcel that's currently under development. Um, this is a 1934 aerial that shows the, uh, the area was still uh, fairly dense, albeit with um, you know, residences and, and mixed use buildings. Um, and this was even after the train station was was moved uh, from the corner of uh, Washington Street and uh, South and North Main uh, by the Mahakano Hotel that, that used to exist there. So um, one of the reasons why this area is a little less dense than the, the initial urban core at, at this time period, but uh, an interesting perspective nonetheless. Um, so today we've got uh, the parcels that uh, Attorney Blank already identified um our you know overall acreage on the chestnut street development to the to the east of the train station uh is about three and a half acres that's the site that includes uh number one number 11 and uh number 17 number 15 uh chestnut street and then there's also the uh, 10 Monroe development uh, across the street uh, which is currently under construction so a lot going on here very exciting to kind of see this uh, cap off with the, uh, the this project before you currently, and I, I can't tell you how, how thrilled I am to be uh, presenting. You know the fourth building uh, in this that started with the the number eleven Chestnut Street building many years ago. Um, some of the concepts that we we look to with this project were really identifying uh, in the neighborhood effort as a whole was really identifying the South Norwalk train station and uh, Norwalk train station here as a gateway and arrival point. Uh, as Attorney Blank spoke, uh, it, it's it's largely uh, this last parcel is, is a partnership, uh, public and private, between uh, the developer and, and the city. Uh, and really, you know, we've been working in concert with them uh, through this whole process and redevelopment of the neighborhood. So it's it, it's really you know, a lot of people, a lot of hands, a lot of efforts going into this, and we think it's really showing results. We're trying to reinforce and improve pedestrian connectivity. Uh, between the train station and the important Washington Street Historic District and the surrounding area, uh, uplift the neighborhood, uh, putting more eyes on the street, uh, make cool spaces for the public and private uh, that engage residents as well as visitors to the uh, to the area and to the neighborhood, um, provide proximate housing to transit and neighborhood amenities, and provide neighborhood scale office and uh, retail uses. And something I didn't get a chance to put in the proposal, but or in the presentation, but I was handed an, an older copy that Bruce Beinfield, the, the founder of the firm, uh, saved from uh, let me see if I can show the, is the hour from uh, 20, 2011. Put it on my camera because I'm not focusing, but um, below the fold, above the fold, Joe Lieberman was retiring, but there's a, a transit master plan uh, calling for housing near the train station, which, you know, to, to, to have this project be so long term and have come before the commission in many different uh, iterations and expansions of the ideas here is, is just for me it's just really exciting to be in front of you with this. Um, so the site plan before you currently is the landscape rendering and um, Vince kind of went with some of this but uh, up at the train station this station place here on the the western side of the property is currently the name of, of how that uh, street or right of way is is referred to is, is looking at some some major improvements with the city. Uh, we've got this parking area that's on grade proximate to the train station. There, I'll get into the, the floor plans a little bit later, but there are some retail parcels fronting on the train station there that are available for people to lease. There's a, a pocket park that's being created. 
um, when the existing number 11 Chestnut Street building uh, was initially conceived. It's got these, these wonderful doors that open up uh, it currently to nothing. Uh, that we always envisioned having a connection to the train station and allowing people from that that building to activate those doors and to, and to be able to go in and out of the the apartments and the businesses that were there. So to to kind of see this um, integrated into the proposal and finally happen is is really you know it, it's a, an exciting thing to kind of see this finally um, you know on on your radar. Uh, and then as uh, the other commissioner noted there is a staircase here that uh, is part of the, the public private space, but that will uh, allow pedestrians and uh, visitors to the area to, to draw down into this uh, newly created courtyard uh, that's really seen as a gathering space and, and an amenity that's, uh, you know, public and private, um, and then, you know, flow out onto Chestnut Street. You can also flow around the outside of the building uh, to get there, there is a retail space on this corner, and this uh, there is one other uh, retail restaurant space that fronts on the courtyard, uh, the lower courtyard. This, which you see here, is an opera courtyard for the residents, so that's where their um, pool and uh, lounge amenities are uh, that are outdoor and, and private up there. Um, but their amenity also faces on the courtyard, very similar to if any of you have been by the One Chestnut Street project, uh, and you'll see some nice renderings of that later in the uh, presentation, um, just a double light space and just, you know, um, really going to create a more vibrant feel down there, a cool place, someplace that people are going to want to come and, and visit here in Norwalk. So that's super cool. Um, kind of get back to where we started. This is the 11 Chestnut uh, Street building, the Leroy Shirt Factory, as we saw it back in 2018 before we started working on this. Uh, this is it in its current state. It's been renovated. The windows have re been replaced. You know, it's no longer a dilapidated building, um, and it's housing about uh, 12,000 square feet of, of offices, along with 16 residence uh, residences. So, all positive things. We even got a, a preservation award uh, from the state for that. So that was uh, that was a, a good um, feather in the cap there. That was very recent. Just came out earlier this year. So, super excited to continue that. Uh, tradition with this building of preserving it and making it part of the community, integrating it into the neighborhood. Uh, the one Chestnut Street building that got completed uh, two years ago. Alan, yeah. Can I just, sorry, can I just interrupt for a second? Just because I don't think you, I'm not sure the commissioners are all aware, but I, I think you also have a vested interest in this project and in the redevelopment because you, your offices are located in that building. Yes, correct. So our office is located uh, right here uh, at uh, 11 Chestnut. Uh, we moved from uh, North Main Street uh, several years ago, the completion of this this building. So it's an exciting place to be. And, uh, you know, we enjoy being here and we, we do have a vested interest in the neighborhood, uh, as, uh, as Attorney Blank said. So it's, uh, it's, it's a great place to be and we're happy to be here and hopefully improving the neighborhood. Uh, so the one Chestnut Street building, which has been occupied uh, for about two years now, I believe, Henry, um, the street level retail, I believe, has, has mostly uh, not been utilized to its full potential because it's currently being used for staging and uh, the field offices for the, uh, the 10 Monroe Street project. It's currently under construction, but I believe there's been a significant amount of interest with the um, neighborhood uh, developing. Uh, in leasing that space, but Henry can probably speak more to that in the future plans. Um, this is the uh, Ten Monroe project currently under um, construction that uh, was, I believe, approved last year. We broke ground earlier this year on that, so that's um, underway. And this is a picture of it as it sits uh, just a few days ago, uh, with the facade coming very much together and taking into account the the back and forth that we had with the, the peer reviewer who's now been involved in uh, all three of these projects. Uh, Bob, I really think has lent a, uh, a good eye and a, a good sounding board for us and um, really helped the process uh, move forward and helped us all get the best out of uh, the designs that we've put forth. Um, kind of getting away from the context and digging into the meat of the proposal, uh, we've got at a high level, the 200 residences that have been spoken, that's 261 bedrooms. For those of you that count bedrooms, 
We've got about 19,000 square feet of improved streetscape that does not include the, the public private courtyard. There's about uh, 12,700 square feet of retail, give or take, uh, 19 workforce units, which is 25 bedrooms, uh, the 13 surface spaces, 283 covered spaces. And then there's also 17 spaces of on-street parking that aren't tabulated or needed for our development. They're just what's being done as part of the street improvements. This is looking at the project from the train station, kind of if you were standing on top of it, uh, looking down at the, the 11 chestnut on the left there, the lower left, and at the uh, the new plaza that we're looking to create or an idea on it. And then um, the treatments at the front of the building, retail space uh, is being seen at the base of the building there as well as over there. And then the entry, uh, that gets into the parking garage where the um, the commuter spaces are located. The staircase is kind of tucked away in this corner and will bring you down to that lower plaza. And approximately right here is where those double doors are that exist in the shirt factory building today. Looking at the plan uh, at this level, this is the public plaza. We were kind of looking this way. Uh, we've got a retail parcel fronting on that um, short-term parking, we've got a retail parcel on the corner, and then the stairs that bring you down into this public-private courtyard. Uh, units ringing this level. This is about three levels up. Uh, so that's the start of the residential at that level. This is kind of if we we're standing on top of the, the number 11 chestnut building, uh, the shirt factory, looking over and down at the, the, the new courtyard that's being created between number 11 and uh, 1517, this current proposal that's in front of you, uh, showing that we've got these two, um, you know, really bookend uh, building massings on the end, uh, and then this private courtyard for the residents, and then this really public, engaging public space that we've worked very hard to vary the architecture and create something that's really interesting and doesn't completely overshadow but plays off of the shirt factory and creates a space a nice little urban courtyard this should be a nice place for people to come down and hang out and i believe they're really trying hard to secure a, a restaurant tenant for the uh, for the space down in the courtyard there and we'll really make it available to people um probably something Along the lines of, I don't know if any of you have been to uh, the Magic Five Pie Company in the in um, East Norwalk there, uh, or uh, or the Ironworks Courtyard, but a similar similar vibe to that. This is a view of that courtyard and kind of the, the contained space that we're trying to create with the varied lighting, different textures. Uh, Eric Rains from the Landscape Architect um, can discuss the various materials with you, plantings, string lights, really trying to create this multi-layered. Uh, effect and then down at this far end here is where you'd find the uh, the common stair to go up to the to the train station if you needed to get that way. Uh, looking at the um, plan level, uh, plan at this level, this is the the section cut down at the lowest level. We've got the tenant space that fronts on the courtyard, and then the um, the resident amenity uh, that also lines the courtyard and is hopefully going to help activate that space. Uh, this is the the drive-in, which you couldn't really see in Vince's plan. So you've got kind of a, a tuck under and around, uh, and that's where the loading space is. And then there's a retail tenant that can occupy the, the corner. So that is a, a relatively prominent corner, as you'll see from the rendering uh, that's coming up. And that really, you know, is hopefully will provide a nice anchor for that that corner of that building and really some activity near the train station that people coming and going from the train either to this development or other places in South Norwalk will be able to go by and patronize that business if it's uh, if it's appropriate. This is looking at that corner. Uh, so more or less outside of uh, where a side-by-side -side, uh, charter school is um, and uh, looking up Henry Street. Uh, so really improving the public realm here, and uh, we've got a nice, uh, similar but different uh, building facade to the one chestnut building, um, taking that queue in the industrial heritage of the neighborhood and bringing that down the street, something that may have existed previously, uh, but is new construction. And then we've got kind of a townhouse aesthetic stepping up Henry Street, and then eventually transitioning to the, the building that we've shown uh, up on the station side. Um, looking at the kind of mid-level cut or the cut above the uh, 
um, the street level retail. This is a typical residential level. So you can see that there's some amenity space that opens up into the courtyard. Uh, and then our typical double loaded corridors we wrap around on, uh, on all ends of the building, except the, uh, the northern exposure where we can look down into the, uh, the double courtyards. Um, this is back on Chestnut Street, kind of looking into the courtyard uh, that's being created, but um, seeing the corner where the tenant amenity and kind of the, the primary entrance to the building on Chestnut Street is, and you kind of get a sense of that drive under and how it relates to the one Chestnut Street, or sorry, number 11 Chestnut Street uh, building. The view of the, uh, the Henry Street streetscape. So this is uh, more of a townhouse aesthetic showing three stories and then stepping the building mass and back. This is the retail parcel on the corner. Uh, looking to have these uh, dooryard gardens and stoops and entries to these uh, duplex units uh, exit directly out onto the street and just really help to provide some um, enlivenment to that neighborhood and some some eyes and people on the street. So not just limiting the, the ingress and egress of the building to the, the main entrances of the building. So we think that's going to going to help with the neighborhood activity. Uh, and that's the end of the architectural presentation. So um, Colin, if you have any questions, uh, can I can you, go back. Can you uh, indicate uh, where uh, the uh, affordable units are going to be located? Uh, sure. Um, so those are dispersed throughout the building. Um, and the plans that you have should indicate those there, uh, a lighter shade uh, and listed as BMR, but this mm -hmm. is uh, the second level, I believe. Uh, so you've got two on that level. Uh, there are some dispersed throughout the courtyard level. So these ones are um, actually fronting away from the, um, the main road and onto the courtyard, uh, which is a nice uh, illusion there and a gesture. And then there's some that have nice frontage on, uh, on Chestnut Street, which is not too bad. Uh, going up another level, we've got uh, a few more scattered throughout the varying facades. Uh, and then up even further, there's some decent sized units that look out over the, the transit plaza, another studio there, uh, and then even higher uh, studio in a one bedroom up there and a one bedroom over here. And I think that's, and then it goes to the roof. Yep. So fairly equitably dispersed throughout the, the building. Um, but, you know, and, we, we did what we can. I don't know if there's room for improvement there, but it's, uh, you know, dispersed among uh, different classes of unit, uh, different facades of the building and different um, different levels. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the intentionality and in, uh, spreading those units out as we've seen in other applications where they're all grouped together. So thank you for the intentionality around that. Yeah, we, we try. It's, uh, you know, it's just just how we just how we try to draw them from the beginning. Can we go back though to uh, Commissioner Price's question earlier about ADA access to that uh, courtyard? To the courtyard. Um, I didn't love the answer of go schlep around the block if you're in a wheelchair. Yeah, so there is um, there is access for the residents within the building, but um, the I mean, unfortunately, the answer is you go around the block. Um, th that's a valid accessible route, and it's um, it is, is a, it anything considered inside. You have that retail space right there, about carving a little space out for a small elevator, so people can get directly right there. Um, that I'd have to defer that to the to the developer as to what they're willing to commit to for that. This is a uh, the, the courtyard now is seen as a um, kind of a public private space, so it is. Uh, I, I think they're looking at reasonable time of day restrictions um, to prevent loitering and um, and that sort of stuff. But generally, I think during the day they're looking at it being open to the public, so it, it could be space that is close to the public. Uh, you know, if if that was an issue, but um, there is accessibility from from the the public right of way, um, and there is also connectivity from within the building for residents. So uh, it, it meets the regulations and the laws as as they're currently written. I have a question. 
Sure, go ahead, JJ. Okay, so my question is in regards to the neighborhood. Um, it's I love the fact that it's opening it up to um, newcomers, young people, students, young professionals. Um, but I'm now thinking about the seniors who are in this neighborhood or who, who have always been in this neighborhood who will also be looking for housing as well. Um, is there any room or has it any thought been given to um, addressing this need for seniors or possibly like studio apartments that will be designated for senior um, who, who, who cannot afford the upscale um, <laughs> apartments that are going up across town? Um, being that this is so close to the train station and easily accessible for them to get around um, I love the townhouse facade that you have on the side. Kind of gives you a city feel to it. That's great. Um, but I'm, I mean, I just would like to see all sectors of the public um, taking advantage of the development that's going on in South Norwalk. Not just newcomers, not just those who have money, but for those who are living on a budget and and looking for a place to live. Yeah. So I I, within, I have I have a half answer community. for you on that. Um, I, I th I'll have to kick some of that to uh, to, to Spinnaker and to Henry, but um, as far as I know, none of the projects down here have age restrictions on them. Uh, my own personal interactions, because the the projects that are under development are right across from our office, so we see people, uh, residents all the time, uh, are a, a wide strata of, uh, of age groups and uh, different demographics. So there are uh, empty nesters that um, are moving out of larger homes that are further north and uh, leave here. Uh, suburbs, uh, and there are people that are emigrating up from uh, New York. There are, um, you know, young people that are, are are renting the smallest studio that they can find that they can afford. There are uh, older people that are trying to keep fit in the fitness center. So it, it really is a a strata there. And and um, you know, one of the things with these apartment uh, with these apartment developments and with with developments of this size is that. Um, it's really uh, you're getting the accessibility uh, to to kind of you know speak to Mr. Cantor's concerns um, throughout the building, right? These buildings are are regulated under the Americans with Disabilities Act, so as such, all the units within the buildings are pretty much required to meet Type B accessible criteria, which is an adaptable unit, and a certain portion of them are required to meet the Type A. Uh, adaptability requirements, which is a little bit more stringent. That's designed specifically for wheelchair users, uh, whereas the Type B units are kind of more uh, all life stages uh, dis inclusive design. So, um, you know, somebody with a minor mobility impairment could, uh, you know, get along as well as somebody with a, uh, a major mobility impairment with the, um, the right modifications uh, or adaptable features, which is usually the installation of grab bars or uh, removal of cabinetry as it sinks and work surfaces. So, um, you know, that's a huge benefit. Plus they're elevator buildings. So you don't have to schlep up and down stairs. And in a building of this size, you've got multiple elevator banks, I believe at the at the train station side, as well as the uh, the Chestnut Street side. So you've, you can get off of your floor plate and go to the, uh, go to the level of your choosing, um, you know, no. or the street side of your choosing. Colin, can I just jump in? So Ms. Jordan Byron, mm -hmm. um, the, yeah. The so, the building will obviously be a suitable building for seniors that can afford it, or for seniors who are lucky enough to get below market units within the building. Well, I understand right? that and there I, is I a ten percent set aside, and I'd like to see a little bit more. I'd like to see, a, a, you know, an additional possibly 2% on top of that, maybe three, that could be designated for seniors or those who have disabilities. This is their neighborhood. They deserve to get, to have access to this. Well, I, I, I let's put it, I don't disagree with your um, goals for seniors or for anyone um or for, and it's really not seniors i mean you're saying seniors but you're you're talking about se seniors who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford market rate units not that, right right that is but i get that there's i get that a, i get that huge demographics that fall that 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 falls in between that net between right. so, you know those in subsidized housing 
and those who do who make too much or get too much, but not enough for the luxury. So and, and, and the being that is ten percent set aside um, with all of this amazing funding streams coming from three major forces, can we not make some room for senior housing, perhaps maybe three or five units? Well, so I, I don't the I don't I don't think that's gonna I don't think that there's gonna be a a, a desire to put more than 10% workforce in the building. But I'm not talking about workforce. Well the the your regulations specifically lay out what what is required and what is not required and and certainly in in the in the draft rewrite you can re, you could uh discuss whether it makes sense to require more than 10% or or a mid market range that's something different and in fact your workforce housing regulations the existing ones provide for various levels above 10% with bonuses in certain zones and at certain income levels, all of which you can do, but but this complies with the with the regulations that are that are currently in this SSDD district, which is where it sits, which is the ten percent. Um, and I, I think on a, on a larger scale, if you're looking for significant increases in, uh, we'll call, let's call it affordable, not necessarily like you know the workforce, but affordable ish rates for seniors or for anyone then okay. the problem the problem that we have is that land costs are really expensive and then for each unit you've got to have parking space for it and that's actually expensive too uh, most likely those seniors will not need parking but that's not what your regulations say you got to provide the parking anyway and Jenny, so Jenny, please adam uh, excuse me uh, for this project i think uh, our our hands are tied. We're bound uh, by uh, the requirements of the existing regulations. Uh, I think that uh, Attorney Blank is is correct. Um, if we feel differently, uh, then uh, as part of our conversations regarding the new regulations, we should talk uh, about how those regulations ought to be changed to accommodate uh, some of these other needs that uh, that clearly aren't aren't met under the current regulations. Thank you for that. Also, it, it, it come oh, to my oh, attention. I just I just want to explain why I'm putting this on the table. Although it should be common knowledge, um, it, it came to my attention specifically about around the topic of displacement. That is not just young families with school-aged children that's being displaced from this neighborhood, but it's actually seniors as well. And I just want to put that out on the table and just be aware of, you know, the historical nature of this neighborhood and how we want to keep it diverse. Not just, you know, ethnically, but also demographically as far as age is concerned. Yeah, and, and Ms. Jordan, I mean, again, I think as, as the chair said, I think we comply with the existing regs. I, I I would personally be happy to to talk with you or the commission about. I think there are ways that you can accomplish your goals in the zoning rewrite if it's really the will of the commission as a whole. And I'm I'm happy to talk about that. But but I, but I I'll try not to take up more time tonight. Uh, with well, well, thank you rewrite. for allowing me to put it on the table. Uh, Steve, you had a comment. Yeah, very quickly. We're, we're just about to undertake an affordable housing study, and I think that's the proper forum to come up with the firm plan on how we handle these kind of things going forward. I think trying to do things on the fly like this is just not the right forum. Oh, no. Thank oh, you. Thank oh. you for that. I just wanted to oh. put it in the record. That's all. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead, Darius. Also, yeah, this is a public hearing, not really a, a review. So I don't. I think much of what is before us cannot be altered. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Blank, yeah. uh, uh, since we've we've just had the uh, architectural overview, do you have any objection to our uh, uh, inviting uh, Bob Griswatz to uh, give his presentation now? Uh, I, I think my preference would be to you to allow Bob to weigh in on whether he wants to go now or after the landscape architect speaks, because he's got comments that relate to that. And I don't care. OK, uh, Bob, what's your preference? 
reference. Uh, let's wait for the landscape. Okay, that, that. that's fine. Thank you. All right. So then, if it's okay with everyone else, then Eric Rains, if you're, yeah. I think you're here, if you can. It, Adam, can I can I just interject one more thing? I got a, a, a quick calculation from one of my associates on just the <laughs> real high level feasibility of doing a ramp as opposed to the staircase uh, from the train station. Just the grade change is about 16 to 17 feet. Oh, wow. uh, so that's about a 200 foot long ramp with landings, um, which I would say by the time you're done ramping is essentially the equivalent of walking around the building. Uh, more or less, and it's probably a little bit more comfortable. Um, in an exterior elevator is not really a practical solution, but um, that's just two things to kind of add back into that discussion. Um, but uh, that's all I have, and I'll turn it over to Eric. Great, thank you, Colin. Um, Eric Rains, for the record, the landscape architect. Um, and it's, it's, uh, so I've extracted some of what Colin has shown and, um, and added, um, added our drawing. So some of this is, it will, will look, uh, look familiar if everyone can see that. Um, <clears throat> so there's, there's been a lot of uh, mentioned already about the landscape architecture and the, the design of the edges of the property and the courtyard, uh, the interior courtyard. Um, but one thing that I wanted to highlight is the um, if you if you can if you see my cursor the the edge of the site that abuts uh, the 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 station place is um, it's a curb step um, from the drive aisle and just across the what will be the new station place road from the from the train station building itself. So anyone that wants to use this space would walk just walk across use the crosswalk or whatever to get. To get into here, and the and uh, the space is is laid out in a way that uh, provides can tree canopy for uh, for people that would be sitting, and there's a there's a sculptural element that Vinefield has developed uh, that you'll see in the renderings that that, that I'll touch on there that gives it um, visual interest whether you're if, whether you're inside the space or from outside looking looking uh, to the inside, and that that piece is. Um, is here and uh, it's represented here. So as a sculptural piece, it's transparent, but it, but yet represented here to be made of, of a, something similar to, or, or like a core 10 steel. So it delineates the space, the public space within the, the courtyard, but it also gives a an edge to that, um, that lets light through both in the daytime and in the evening. The edges of Station Place are, are treated with this, the city standard uh, tree light um, um, uh, rhythm. And so you'll see that in all of the plans. And then interior to the to the upper courtyard is is the, the tree canopy that, that, that I had mentioned um, a second ago. And then using the same the same renderings. Um, it, this one is a good image because it, it shows how the, the how the, the courtyard will be illuminated and it also start begins to speak to the fact that the courtyard is a it's a it's a long rectangular space and um and the intention with the landscape design was to utilize the paving and the if i can make this bigger um utilize the paving material uh let's see this is in the way Utilize the pave the mixture of paving and planting so that it it begins to um, take that larger rectangular space and 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 break it into smaller spaces um, as you move through it and 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 give it some undulation to the edges of it as well as as surrounding what would be a lawn panel uh, all of it revolving kind of uh, revolving around a a water element that's in the middle. And that water element is intended to be, it's a large scale piece because the space itself is a relatively large scale. And, uh, and so around that would be opportunities for, for, for furniture at, at within, the, within the pavement areas or, and or on the lawn areas. 
<clears throat> there are other amenities in here like fire pits. There's a rectangular fire pit here, here, and here so that the, the space could be used by small groups of people or large groups of people or or individuals, either one. This is this now that I've blown it up, you could get a better sense of of how this of how the the edge um, is facing the, the actual train station building, and then this sort of as you move around that sculptural piece into what would be where the canopy trees are, we've utilized a, a paving detail that that um, again begins to further break down the scale of the space, so it won't feel um, quite as large as it as it really is. Eric, uh, is that Compass Rose what's going to be uh, implemented? Do you think? Oh, that's the plan. Um, you know, oh, we awesome. can use we can use um, the you know one of the really one of the a really good material to use for that and for all of this is is different colors of tinted concrete. Um, yeah. You can it can be very effectively done. As it um, harkens back to uh, Oyster Shell Park at the top. There is also another giant Compass Rose that is just right. pretty cool. So anyway, that's really neat. Yeah, and and it, and not only is it a nice element in itself, but it it like I was saying, it, it it's an element that sort of breaks down the scale of the space and gives it a, a, you know brings the scale more to more to more to a human scale. Uh, you'll also see in here, um, you know these these dash lines are representing where bicycle parking would be, um, so that it you know so that that that's accommodated as well, and um, and then. As Colin had mentioned on, particularly on Henry Street, we're, the, what's important here, the, the townhouse uh, doors that he had mentioned, having those planters ag against the facade of the building gives a nice layer between the sidewalk and the vertical nature of the facade. And that shows really well in, in, um, in, in the renderings, and um, which is here so uh, rather than have the sidewalk just go straight up to the base of the building and have this plant material in the ground by elevating it a little bit it, it again contrib contributes to the scale um, you know bring the scale down to you know to more of a human scale it has that inner it's like an intermediate intermediate uh, size element so that uh, so that it, it gives some separation from uh, from the windows of the unit, but it also gives some separation for the the, the pedestrian, um, you know, between them and and the facade of the building. And then the same same thing applies on both Henry and on Chestnut that I mentioned on Station Place, where there's the street tree um, uh, light rhythm that's part of the city requirement for um, for sidewalks. And then in the within our drawings, there are um, a couple of photos that give a sense of of. So here's a, this is similar. This is an, uh, a photo of the kind of effect that we would be um, achieving with the um, with the water. We can get back to that. Here, so the the goal would be that it would be sort of a rock lined opening in the ground. The water at surface itself would be relatively calm, so that you have the this reflectivity that you see in this this kind of this photograph here, and then the and then it's surrounded also with vegetation, so that it comes up and in, into the rocks um, that are would be around the um, the 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 water. Um, fire pits that we're you know that we're that we're um, proposing to use and then in front of the um, these these large circular um, um, metal planters would occur in this vicinity um, again repeating the material of the sculptural wall that um, that, that I'd mentioned earlier so generally that's the the landscape plan uh, of course, in our drawings, we have you know, detailed planting lists and and um, and um, the lighting analysis. We've gotten a comment. Um, the, I think the um, couple, it was just a couple of days ago. Um, we had we had finished addressing a comment we had gotten a while back. So the lighting analysis that you have in here um, will it it will be it will be reflective of 
the latest uh, lighting changes that were made after submitting these drawings. So if there are any questions, um, I think that's generally the, the landscape. How does the park, that, that lower park kind of work being gated and semi-public private, like what's the thought around that? Um, let's see. Um, D, what do you mean deeded? No, no, gated. Sorry. Oh, gated. Oh, like, well, it seems gated like it's going to be shut at a particular point in time. Just curious. The, yeah. How it's uh -huh. the thinking how that's going to work. Eric, I can handle this one. Um, and it was noted on Bob, um, our federal review to bring up as well. Henry Connor from Spinnaker Real Estate Partners. So we envision that this park operates very similar, similarly to uh, the elevated courtyard that we have over at 230 East Avenue at the Crown Building. We'd love it to operate as open as possible. At the same time, we want to be able to, we put the gates here to show that it, it, if in any event that we needed to close the park, that we had that option. But we think that it operates as a nice pass through from the train station to Chestnut Street, um, as well as a, a great amenity to the neighborhood. So intention is to keep it as open as possible, but reserve the right in, in the case of any. Sure. But are you reason. considering like uh, to start like closing it at a particular time every night leaving it are you starting with like leaving it open 24 at the moment leaving it open but potentially closing it you know after hours probably after commuter hours gotcha. thank you um if there are more questions for mr rains great if 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 not um we'll move to uh our last presenter uh, we were going oh, to sorry, we were gonna sorry. bring in bob bob Griswats at this point. Bob, you're on. On. And if I could have either uh, Colin and or Eric pull up drawings as maybe I talk about them, that might be helpful. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members. Sure, I can I can help you out, Bob. Thank you. Uh, uh, Robert Griswats, DiCarlo and Dahl Architects, uh, Meriden, Connecticut. Um, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to come back with you. And just so that you know what uh, the overview of what we've been trying, what we have been trying to do with all of our reports uh, for the commission is to give you a very detailed analysis of how a particular project meets the specific uh, goals and requirements of the uh, regulations, uh, the design guidelines, the redevelopment plan, um, and a few other things. Um, and uh, so while I won't refer to the uh, report specifically here uh, that that document should be something that you could say yes this is what we reviewed this is what was recommended this is why we took the action that we took um i'd like to start with the court it's got a couple things up just about the the um uh what i i think you have a very very good project here and uh, maybe a, 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 lot, a little lack of modesty and uh in reference to uh the first top gun uh, it's a very good project. Our goal is to try to make it better. And I think that it is better for the review process. Uh, so this, yes, this is a good re rendering. One of the things that wasn't really explained here is that the massing of the building, how you de deploy this much bulk is carefully um, uh, calibrated so that this space still feels open so that the, the wall of the new building on the left side has approximately the same height as the wall of the uh, historic factory on the right. And that pushes all of the other building to form a courtyard at that level. But if you can imagine if that was reversed and there was a six story wall here or a seven story wall, this space would feel very different and alley-like. So that's first thing you should know is that they did a very, very good job with that. Uh, if we could go to, let's see, uh, the on the landscape, there's a section through the stair because we were talking about the stair. And one of the things that we as reviewers saw as a real asset um, in this uh, project is this wonderful, uh, yeah, I think it's maybe down a little, this wonderful pedestrian uh, link from the train station to Chestnut Street, that's exactly it, which has the opportunity for being continued perhaps in the future in a future project 
one of those things that uh, uh, redevelopment plans always aspire to pedestrian links and you seldom get because you just seldom have these opportunities. While this stair, when we talk about accessibility, accessibility is easy to define or and perhaps too easy to define in terms of can a wheelchair get there or can't, can't they? One of the things we worked with the applicant on was the design of this stair and spreading it out, making it more gradual so that it's easier to go up. For those of us who have maybe more years than some of the design staff, as the as you have as you get a little older older, you want a little more gradual stairs. So this is at least more graceful. It doesn't mean that you can take a wheelchair up it. You can't. But um, as you get into your, your 70s, you will still be able to go up the stair, which is nice to know. Uh, we talked about, we, we spent a lot of time looking at the lighting and I happened to uh, overview uh, the review of the previous uh, project that you reviewed this, this evening. And yes, they had what's called a photometric. A photometric is a floor plan that shows the light level or a site plan that shows the light levels. Uh, we actually went into detail and looking at what areas were adequately, adequately lit, what weren't. There's, at, as of the documents and uh, our report on, I think, page three, calls out exactly what documents were included in this review. So there were still some areas that needed a little bit of work. It's almost there. It's really good. It could just be made a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Okay, the courtyard. We we there was something that we didn't two things that we did not want to opine on in this report because it's really not a design thing. Uh, and one was just alluded to. This is a public space, but it's also a gated space. Uh, we just recommend that the commission at least discuss uh, with the applicant, certainly, or with the applicant has already put in their uh, initial or uh, a statement and the and their written statement is included in the appendix for the report. Uh, but what's the implication of that? You've, you've, maybe you've discussed that enough, but we didn't feel comfortable saying it should be this way or it should be another way. Uh, the second thing was the fire pits. Be honest with you, I've never seen a public space with a fire pit in it. It's it's something that's very typical. If you have a restaurant maybe or, or a hotel or something like that, a resort. Um, I don't know if that's appropriate or not. So there's a statement but from the applicant on why they think it's appropriate um, and how they, and more important, how they will manage it because that, that's an important thing. So those two we didn't, uh, we're just urging you to discuss. Uh, now, a couple of architectural things that we worked on. Let's look at, there are a couple of renderings where you can kind of see the entry. I can't remember which one is. There's one from, uh, from Henry Street that's pretty good. Okay, th well this, okay, so this one's interesting. Uh, just, Okay, this one's interesting too. All right, so they're both interesting. We'll talk about both of them. One of the challenges that we've seen now having gone through several of these projects is it isn't always obvious how you get into a building. And I'll give you an example that isn't one of this developer or this architect's projects, but when we were working on with, with you on Pinnacle, the entry to the building was in that cross uh, block pedestrian way and you had no idea if you were on the street where to go. That, as an urbanist, seems a strange sort of thing. So we worked very hard here, going back and forth and trying to come up with something that uh, uh, is is more uh, obvious, directs you. So that if you stand at this corner and you can see Sono Metro, you say, okay, that's where I must have to go. And then if you see glass below it, you say, okay, that's pretty good. That's probably the entry. Now let's go to the other one that's- so Bob, before you jump off there, yes. that's the improved uh, perspective on here? Like this yes. is after, this is, you're saying this is this looks good. This looks I, good. I, I stamp this approval. I mean, I, I like this edition. Yes, that's right. I recommend this condition, how's that? There you go. All right, <laughs> let, 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 let's go midway down Chestnut looking the other way. Okay, so here you go. Unfortunately, at this angle, the blade sign completely disappears but you get a really good idea of the glass work. 
So the whole point is, again, from either corner, from, from Henry Extension or from Monroe, you should have a pretty good idea of where to come into this building. And I think now you do. So that's good. Um, two more things. Let's go back to uh, Henry Street Extension. Not that one, the other uh, further back, please. Yes. Okay, so two other things. And again, this has been a challenge on all of the projects, uh, or at least these these three projects. Uh, how do you, one, how do you just put a cornice on even a, a townhouse? So the, the townhouses there, Burbank Row, we work very carefully with them to come up with a cornice that feels like a traditional cornice. It's different, but it's it's proportioned. It's got the detail. One of the one of the important things for good, in our, in our opinion, for good architecture is to have small elements that give you a sense of scale, a sense of subtlety, and this does now. Um, the other thing that, again, we've been trying to work with, and I think we've got a pretty good one here, but we think it can still be a little bit better is this railing along, I can't remember what we call this, this part of the building, but this railing that goes along this brick part um, where, where we were encouraged, we've been encouraging this team on each project to integrate the railing into the box that's below it, if you will, so that if you took the railing out, you would say something's missing. Uh, uh, and why are we doing this? Because the guidelines talk about having a base, a middle, and a top. Well, a top doesn't have to be a traditional cornice. A top can be something else. And this is kind of thinking along the lines of what you might have done if you were doing an Art Deco building or, you know, the top of the Chrysler building isn't any, isn't it at all cl classical, but it's something that tells you it's a top. So trying to come up with a top. What's still... Uh, uh, the team is is working on, I believe, is figuring out can can they take the brick and make recesses in the brick uh, or projections in the brick that somehow encapsulate or accommodate or suggest that this railing must be there. So that if if in your mind you ever said I could take the railing away, you would say I can't take it away. That is the top of the building. So we think this is is a good approach. And then finally. So Bob, just to, to pause you on that, just to make sure I'm, I'm following. Uh, so I really appreciated your points in this in the memo here. But you're saying this is still outstanding as room for improvement. And right. should, there's, there's if there's we one agree more. as the commission should commit uh, condition appropriately. Right, exactly. And then it, it wasn't mentioned in the in the uh, presentations, but because it was asked about in the previous project, uh, this project does have a solar array on the top. I don't believe it's quantified, but it is making an attempt to, to meet that uh, alternative energy or energy conservation. It's not really energy conservation, but it's an alternative energy source or, or a, a green energy source. Uh, so they deserve credit for that too. So that those are just some observations. I'm here for questions if you've got questions. On that point, I'm glad you brought up the solar array, Bob. Adam, do you have a sense of how much you're going to get up there or how much of the building you think you'll be able to uh, power off of that? Um, we, we've talked a little bit about that. I think Henry can talk about it. And and and, and obviously, the we do absolutely intend to have solar uh, on the roof. And, and I, as came up previously and has come up on prior applications, I think in your new regs, it is likely to be a requirement. It is not currently a requirement. And I think um, it will be hard to argue that it even can be a condition, but we are proposing it nonetheless. And Henry, do you have the the what about what you think we can do? Uh, Nick, I think the area that we have that's shown the solar is about 3,000 square feet. I think that would get you somewhere between a 12 and a 15 kilowatt system. One thing I'll note is that we don't have the exact layout of all our condensers, and we're actually going into a new energy code. Um, which will make the entire building more energy efficient because right. previous projects, like the last two projects that we worked on, were under the 2015 building code. This will be under the new building code for the state of Connecticut, as well as new energy code. That does require some changes to our mechanical systems. We haven't fleshed all of that out yet, um, but we're you know we we've proposed that we're going to put the solar on the building and, and we're going to do that the exact layout what we can present oh, right. as part of our zoning permit, so that you can see 
exactly what the layout is. It may or may not shift from what it is shown as today. Of course. Thank Henry, you. Henry, would you would you care to put an order of magnitude? You think that's 10% of the building's uh, energy needs? 2%? 25%? I'm not exactly sure. It's it's hard. Well, to does say anybody in the team have an idea? I guess that's a question. Well, we can't really power the the tenants' electricity, so this will go to the house. Oh, meter. interesting. Okay, that well, that's important for the commission to know that. Okay, and I assume there's there's some legal, whatever. Yeah, that's regulatory. Yep. Regulatory. Yes, okay. Yeah. Is my understanding. So it would portion some. It would power some portion of the of the common area in the building and, and keep that. Electricity off the grid. The exact amount, I'm not exactly sure. Not a massive amount of the building, I will say. One of the things I saw highlighted in the uh, peer review report was about uh, screening the HVAC equipment. I think in the renderings here, it looks like the equipment was still exposed. Uh, was that um, something that had been addressed, uh, but maybe not updated in the rendering? It was not addressed. To be honest with you, this appears in every review because it's sort of it. Unless by chance the architect happens to be focusing on it, it's generally about the last thing that you focus on. And to be honest with you, if the if the equipment as it's shown here is well back from the street, yeah, you know, you can see it from from uh, half a mile away, but you can't see it from the street as you can see here. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I wonder um, with just uh, adjacent properties as well if they would have. Um issues with being able to see that um, on-screen mm -hmm. equipment. Yeah. Bob, other than the things that you listed, is there anything else from your report that, you know, Adam mentioned earlier that they've been very uh, amenable and working with you and, and, you know, checking a lot of the boxes off or, or making the updates per your recommendations. But other than the things that you said, is there anything left outstanding? Well, in the report there, there's, uh, as as the system that we've developed, uh, red stuff, red stuff, red text that appears in the report and then is repeated at the end as the recommendations. I, I, are... The ones that we've discussed are all the major ones, but you know, there's a little something. Uh, for example, okay, for example, the um, the landscape plan has a note that says we will locate trash receptacles. Okay, so our our recommendation is that the applicant is to submit a landscape plan at some point that has trash receptacles on it, okay? You've covered that requirement. And it's things like that. Gotcha. Thank you. Anything else? Similarly in your, uh, in the in the red text in the report, um, has the, um, the cladding uh, related to the, the panel system uh, been addressed to your satisfaction? Well, we're still recommending, okay, so here's the issue. It's, it's, I'm sorry to, to take the time, but uh, Mr. Beinfield was, felt it was important enough to add a narrative, which is in the appendix, that the particular type of profile of siding, not the material, not its size, not anything else, just its profile is uh, that which is a clabbered, which is something that you typically find on a one to two story building, generally small. It's just confusing. The manufacturer makes several profiles that function equally well and don't confuse you. So it's still our recommendation that use one of the ones that isn't confusing, not one that tells you this is as much I can't even say tells you it's a smaller building. The building is, you know, 180 by 280 feet or something like that. It's not a small building. Don't pretend that it is. And quite frankly, for the aesthetic that that this building has, a modern profile is really more appropriate. So that's our recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, Adam, you had uh, one more presenter on your team. Sorry, Luke, can I ask Bob one more question? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Nick. Uh, garage ventilation, Bob, it seemed like yes. an important thing. Is that still outstanding or not? I couldn't quite it's, tell. Well, and, and again, we we ran, ran into this on 10 Monroe. Uh, mm -hmm. This garage is going to need ventilation. It's going to take space both in the floor plan 
and uh, conceivably, wherever it exhausts, uh, it, it you're going to have some piece of equipment. So they'll have to submit something like that. Uh, I think we have in there an estimate, and it's really, I'm not the engineer. I just know what engineers tell me. You're probably going to need two four-foot ducts exhausting this at opposite corners of the garage. So they're going to come up through the building. At this stage of the floor plans, really doesn't make that much difference. Gotcha. But so it's not probably not going to stop, you know, at eye level on the deck. They're probably going to go up so that the exhaust goes well away. Gotcha. So it's not that they're not doing it, it's just it isn't denoted on the plan. Yeah, it's, it's right. It, gotcha. They can take care of it, but they haven't taken care of it yet. Uh, Anna, you had a question? I'm sorry, Anna, your, your hand's up. And you're muted. No, I don't have a question. I have a child that grabbed the mouse. I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to figure out how to get my hand down. That's fine. Um, okay, uh, Adam, again, uh, you had uh, uh, one more presenter on your team. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, Greg uh, Del Rio and and Greg, if you, I mean, it's nine forty five. If you don't mind giving them the the short version and then just answering their their questions, thanks. You got it. Um, sharing my screen. Um, <coughs> Greg Del Rio, um, professional engineer in the state of Connecticut, uh, director of traffic engine transportation engineering for Hardesty and Hanover. Um, so yeah, I'll go quick. Uh, this is the study area that that we covered. Here is here's the site on the corner of Henry and, and Chestnut Street and backing up against the, the rail the, the, the station. Um, it includes the driveways from the station as well as the intersections surrounding from Monroe to South Main Street. And we went down to Concord Street. So we have the full inventory. Uh, including the traffic counts in this area. And we also coordinated with the uh, parking authority, which provided some um, parking uh, off on street parking data for us. Um, because when we get to the one way uh, study uh, and the one way conversion component of the analysis, some parking was 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 impacted. So we had that information and coordinated. Um, so again, I will breeze through this. Um, so in addition to the traffic counts, we accounted for um, certain developments that are partially full, as well as other developments that uh, potentially are online. And um, there's your list of developments, uh, including um, the possible development of Webster Block. Uh, and we also included the uh, potential sort of recommendations that were included in the Norwalk Station TOD study. Um, and then finally, the other um, adjustment that was made to existing traffic, uh, again, with the Norwalk, the South Norwalk TOD study, uh, and, and the realignment of the, the roadway that will go through the station, uh, buses, the transit buses, I will no longer be able to make the U-turn that they make within the parking lot in front of the station building. Um, so they will be uh, rerouted and we've accounted for that rerouting of the transit buses, which will now come out onto Henry Street, go to South Main North, and then come back onto Monroe Street and, and continue on their existing routes. So we've accounted for all of that. And then on top of that, we have the trip generation from, from the residential, the retail, and the restaurant components. Um, and you can see here, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit for you, uh, basically between about 100 and 150 trips during the peak hours. You know, we did the morning, the afternoon, and the Saturday uh, peak periods were included in our analysis. Those trips were then, oh, sorry about that, were then distributed. Um, so residential trips, uh, as you've been hearing, uh, there's sort of three levels to the garage. The lower two levels, the lowest level is um, accessed from Chestnut Street. The middle level is from Henry Street. And those are the two that feed into the um, residential component uh, and, and provide parking supply for the residents. In addition, 
Uh, during the day, there will be um, some of the employees for the restaurant and the retail will also park on these levels. Uh, and both of those levels have about the same amount of parking, 98 and 99 spaces. So 50% was assigned to Chestnut Street and 50% of the residents were assigned to and from uh, Henry Street. In addition, the third level has another curb cut uh, proposed that will lead into the third uh, level of the garage and, and a few outdoor spaces. Those are in support of transit riders as well as the retail and restaurant patrons and visitors. So that's just basically open to the public and will be similar to you know, what you have at the station parking today. And so those were assigned to this driveway Otherwise, the regional route, routing and um, distribution is similar for everybody. <clears throat> so we then took the, you know, all those layers of the bill and compared the build to the no build condition as we do in our traffic studies. The last column shows if there is a change in level of service and if so, what the, the impacts are. And as you can see, um, there's either no change in level of service or very minor from a B to a C. As long as we're below a, a D or, or less, um, there's generally no mitigation is required or changes to the system or, or, or further analysis. And, and that's the good news. So basically throughout the whole study area that I mentioned, uh, no traffic impacts were found. Again, this was, as Adam had uh, mentioned earlier, this was reviewed by TMP as well as uh, their peer reviewer. Um, so that's that's the story as far as existing conditions goes and existing um, circulation and roadway patterns. Uh, TMP is investigating the possibility of converting uh, Chestnut Street to permanently one way southbound between Monroe and Concord. Um, everything else stays the same except to accommodate that one way change Henry Street between South Main and Chestnut needs to become two ways so that you can, you know, you have basically a, a way to get out and a way to get in to the station and make the other connections. So uh, that's where some of the parking impacts, the majority of the parking impacts is Henry Street, which is only 24 feet wide. Um, basically today with one way pattern, you can have parking on one side when you go to this one-way system and, and Henry becomes two-way, we lose parking on Henry. That's that's the major uh, parking impact um, and reduction in, in overall on-street parking. Um, um, so, you know, this is just a distribution again from the residential and the retail to the different driveways and uh, again, the overall big picture is uh, all acceptable levels of service uh, at South Main and Henry Street because of the two-way, the, the Henry Street approach. So again, just to, so this approach, the new approach to uh, eastbound South Main, which doesn't exist today, and the signal will have some delay, but again, it's really a function of the, the signal timing more than, than the traffic. Uh, no matter how light the traffic is, you'll, you'll be waiting for that red light to come and, and the green light to come. But, but what you can also see here is that, you know, there's, there's not much queuing and um, overall acceptable um, operations for that, for that movement. Um, the one area of concern that popped up when, when you don't touch any of the signals or geometry, uh, northbound, um, on South Main as you approach Monroe, and I'll go back to the graphic in a second, um, we do start to get long queues where now it's about 300 feet. It gets to be about 500 feet, which is almost back to Henry Street itself. Uh, so we are working with TMP on trying to mitigate this. And that could be either signal changes at the intersection of, of Monroe or possibly uh, taking away a couple of parking spaces and daylighting and making a left turn lane. And so what I'll do now is hopefully, uh, so that would be this approach here. 
Um, and you can see that, you know, 500 feet takes you basically a little past Raymond Street, where today the queues are generally about here. It would extend to here. Um, and so either I think it's going to work through just manipulating some signal timing changes and, and giving some time to the north south and taking it away from Monroe Street. If that doesn't work, and I think it will, then there's the potential to eliminate, you know, two or three parking spots here. And as you can see with the other two approaches, that's already been done. So a slight widening in order to make the left turn pocket. And when you do that, it it basically mitigates the the impact of this long queue that you see here. Uh, the reason I highlighted this in green is because all those trips, again, I'll flip back, all the, all the trips that used to come up Chestnut and make this right and then this left are now in that longer queue going straight up here because they've made the turn. Um, yeah, oops, sorry. Give me a second to get back. There, they've come down Henry now and come up this way. So this left turn got uh, is better improved while the northbound got a little bit worse. Um, so that's really a summary of all the traffic impacts with and without the one-way conversion. Um, and then finally, due to the one-way conversion and we lose some parking spaces, uh, you know, there's a lot of information here. The, 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 the real story is if you look, this is parking by block face and on different days. Um, we had a lot of data that was provided by the, by the parking authority for the demand side and, and you know, our inventory had the supply side. So you can see that there's you know, surplus parking in, in the immediate area today. There will be surplus parking, even with the one-way conversion, the elimination of some of those parking spaces. It's just a little less surplus than, than there is today is an easy way to, 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 uh, to summarize it. Um, so overall, um, you know, the parking impacts for these streets are not that bad. Um, and that's it. If you want to have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So I have a question, but I will go after Tammy. Thank you, JJ. Um, Mr. Del Rio. JJ and, and then Chapin. Um, Mr. Del Rio, I did not hear you mention anything about the side-by-side -side school or the former Columbus Magnet School, which I believe you now call CMS. Uh, we had a commissioner a few years ago on our board who used to drop off his <laughs> children at those schools and would bemoan the fact that it would take a half an hour to 40 minutes to go around the block to drop off somebody there. So unless those schools are being decommissioned after the building of the new Sono Elementary School, which I haven't heard, but I might not be informed on that, I, I this there's a lot of traffic there twice a day. Um. And so the we looked at the peak hours. The you know two hundred units of residential is not going to impact a lot of you know off peak traffic um, volumes. <clears throat> um, so I mean, with all due yeah. respect, the school I think starts at about nine nine fifteen, and that's kind of when a lot of people leave their home to go out. That's, but yeah, that's at the end of the the really at the end of the peak most people have left for work and they're they're arriving at work by nine o'clock not not leaving their residences at, at nine but traffic patterns typically die down a little bit there well i guess it will be what it is but i would just like to go on the record that i know that those blocks on chestnut street and henry street when those two schools are you know starting in the morning and uh dispersing in the afternoon there's a lot of surface traffic there with parents who hang on the street to pick up their students. Ms. Lang Alice, I, I think the, the CMS location is currently being used as an incubator for the Sono School. That population will be gone once the Sono School starts. The city has not committed to what the future use of that site will be there doesn't appear to be a demand for it to be a school. I'm sure it won't be a vacant lot, you know, forever, but, but, I, but it's not going to be, the CMS is going to be gone. Um, side by side will stay. 
Okay, well, that'll help the situation, I'm sure, um, Attorney Black. Thank you. Okay, uh, JJ and then Chapin. Yes, I'd like to make two comments. Two comments may very well turn into three. But um, the first one is, is that I'd like to um, echo um, the, the, the sentiments that Tammy expressed in regards to the two schools that are in that area. I live in that area and I could assure you that the traffic patterns are not only, you know, before nine o'clock and after three o'clock, the traffic patterns are all day long. Okay. And so if you make this the turnaround, especially particularly on Henry Street, which is this one block of lovely residential homes, mostly owned by seniors. You want to make that the dumping ground for buses? They're already getting the noise pollution, air pollution from this from the um the school buses. Now you want to add some city buses to that street? That's 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 that that's not fair. I can't even imagine that would even be accepted or not protest against heavily. Okay, so that's uh the first point. The second point is is that Chestnut Street serves as a get around from South Main Street, which is already congested. So now you want to make this a one way going, going the opposite flow of traffic. So people like myself who live in this neighborhood, I literally would have to now go on South Main Street all the way up those blocks to get to my home when I could have just gone down Chestnut Street and, and not have the deal with all the traffic lights and the traffic and the congestion. So that's number two. And number three is as far as the city buses that you intend to provide some um, short term or, or, or a through way to, to South Main Street. Okay, you have this whole other artery. You have Martin Luther King Boulevard. Why is that not being considered? So yeah, um, the all 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 three of those issues are not development issues. Those are those are city issues and TM and P. But they're traffic um, issues. Proposals. They they're are, traffic they are, issues. They are traffic issues, but they they they're not due to the development. Uh, those are occurring. Those are being investigated and occurring regardless of this development. Yeah, so, Ms. Jordan Byron, the, the the those changes that you're talking about that you have some issue with are being investigated by TMP for city purposes. Not we're not proposing those changes. We're just saying if the city goes forward with those changes, our project still works. We're not suggesting them. Who is suggesting it? TMP and redevelopment are looking into those changes. Okay, but did you just not do a traffic study on this? They required us to. Correct. Okay. They were but factoring, JJ, they, they were factoring that in that right. they were saying it was if there's current conditions and if nothing changes, it works. It, mm -hmm. That's the end outcome, right? Right. And if, and, and, and Adam, correct me here. And if there are these changes, it also works based on the outcomes. It They're can go not saying. Or. They are not right. advocating one way or the other. They are not Thank you. suggesting, right, Adam, I'm saying that That's correctly. Correct. Yeah. That's They're correct. just saying that traffic. And then I think also we need to think about JJ's in this area. Hopefully a lot of people moving into those are not hopping in the car every day because they're so close to be able to walking. They're working mm -hmm. downtown. They're hopping on the train. Obviously it's right. not going to be everyone, but like, I think that's also a factor here too. Yeah. I mean, I park and ride too when I go into the city. Totally. No, so, I totally hear what I you're totally saying. Take it shouldn't of it be a stuff, dumping I, ground I, at I, all. I know exactly what you're talking about on this map and my hair is on fire if that goes through. All right, Chapin. I see Mr. Uh, Grizzowax uh, has raised his hand. I, I don't know if that's related to this conversation, but I'm going to change it slightly. So I, I don't know if he's got a response directly to this before I move on to something else. Oh, go ahead. Me or Bob, uh, you, you, Chapin, you go ahead. Okay. Um, I see that there's uh, three driveways along Henry Street uh, that are probably within like 200-ish feet of each other, as well as um, to JJ's point, I'm glad she brought up the uh, um, units across the way on Henry Street. Um, in, in the traffic study, was there any concerns about um, conflicts here uh, with the, the number of driveways showing up on Henry Street and anything that we can do to reduce those conflict points? Uh, 
it wasn't brought up in the reviews as a concern um, or 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 a comment. So um, yeah, we didn't look any further. Could the driveway for the surface lot be closed without um, significant impacts? Um, I, I recognize I'd reroute some of the traffic to, I think what's identified here is intersection eight uh, right. to reduce the, uh, the number of conflicts there. Uh, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think there was a pros and cons about this particular curb cut. Um, there, there were some, um, comments of what if we closed this and brought them through the existing curb cut and then they came in and out here um you know it's it it's 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 a trade off basically right you're you're either going to have you know more of an impact at the train station uh versus alleviating that sort of busy area particularly when when the trains come in versus Henry Street, which is, you know, generally pretty quiet. So that that was the trade-off. And I don't think that that's been totally, you know, closed, but I that that did come up and the conversation was had on what the benefits of having this curb cut was versus not. It's a it's a tough decision. Thank you. Bob, your comment? It wasn't really common. It was a question just because it isn't, as near as I can tell, anybody in the design team that is creating the bus flow onto Henry. It's because the circle was taken out at right. the train station. And maybe there is somebody here who was part of that discussion who could explain why the circle was taken out. That was a TMP decision that the, just was not going to work. Uh, it was taking up too much parking. It was taking away too much surface parking within the lot. So that's why they took the circle out. Well, Steve, do you think they should revisit that? We can ask them to, but I, I mean, I think that's there. They had specific reasons why, as well as um, about the second entry on Henry Street that they had concerns about eliminating that um, due to uh, conflicts as well as keeping the flow, flow cut, cut through the garage and from onto the that piece of it but i think it would be it was said it would be dangerous to use henry street as the cut through for bus traffic yeah i mean you could put it in as a you can you know you can put it in the resolution if you could put it in as a concern given yeah. yeah i think uh if I'm All not right. mistaken, but we're, part, part but we're of not... it was the limit, the the height limitation of this uh, of this bridge. If I'm not mistaken, that we yeah ten five there was there was concern over that as well. Which bridge? To, um, to go that's, back that's to the, MLK, that's the railroad bridge going into the back of the parking right. garage. I, I from think the train part station. of the, part of the, part of the reason they didn't route them that that way to MLK was because of this clearance issue. But the bus is just turning right now. It just turns around in the train station and goes Correct. back out onto Monroe Street. Correct. And I think the concern here is that Henry Street is going to become overloaded. But let's deal again. Let's deal with that when when um, we get to um, our resolution. Yeah. Okay. I want to move. I want to move this hearing forward and give the public an opportunity to speak. It's already. It's already ten o'clock. I think it's only about six or seven buses an hour that get <laughs> rebounded. So whenever well, ten, one or ten minutes. Right. Six or seven buses an hour is air pollution on a small street like that. Mm -hmm. Attorney Blank, um, is, um, is is your presentation completed? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, then uh, we're gonna move to uh, public comment. Uh, Brian, can you explain uh, to the public how they can access the hearing? Sure. For, so for anyone from the public, if you'd like to speak, uh, you could use the raise your hand tool. It's at the bottom of your screen. You'll click that once. And if you're dialed in on a phone, you would hit star nine. <laughs> First, we have Paul Chenard. Hello. Um, thank you for taking my um, my comment. 
Um, overall, I really like the project. I think it's um, well designed, provides a very um, beautiful streetscape, really great architecture. Um, I do have some concerns as one um, of the panelists had mentioned with all the additional curb cuts that are going to be on the road. I think there's like four or five in total. Those two additional on, on Henry Street, um, two additional on Chestnut. It just creates a lot more conflict points for pedestrians and cyclists uh, transverse in the area. So I have a little bit of concern like that. I would like to see some of those collapsed if possible to reduce them as reduce conflicts as much as possible. If we do turn um, Chestnut into a, a one way, which I don't recommend, I'd rather keep it two way and turn the other extension of Henry Street into a two way because you want as many um, points of um, as many paths as you can travel down, whether by you're cycling, driving, or whatever, it just helps traffic flow a little bit. I would like to see that rather than going to a one-way system on any particular road. But if we do go down um, the route of turning Chestnut into a one-way, I'd like to see a contraflow bike lane um, put on there. So that way you can pedal up instead of having to go around. And um, yeah, I believe that's all my comments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, if anyone else would like to speak, you could use the raise your hand tool. It's the hand icon at the bottom of your screen. You click that once. Seeing nothing further, Mr. Shulman. All right. Uh, then we'll uh, turn it back to uh, Attorney Blank. Uh, you're muted, uh, Adam. Sorry. Okay. Thank. Thank you. Um, I think. Um, I think Greg, do you have anything to to add in response to the Mr. Chenard's comments? Um, just that there was, um, you know, the there's actually two additional. So there is four altogether curb cuts, but it ends up being um, uh, really one extra on Henry. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And one less on chestnut and one less on chestnut. Aren't there three cuts on chestnut proposed and two currently? Am I getting that right? I think there's like a, in, in I think, I think part, yeah, part of it is, is how you read that. And like, I mean, yeah, it's like, you can look at three curb cuts, uh, and we'll defer to the traffic guys on specifics here, but the one in the courtyard is not really a curb cut. That's a maintenance and accessibility uh, curb cut. So, I, I mean, you can kind of discount that one because it's like we're going to wheel a lawnmower or a piece of equipment in there to do some maintenance and then we're going to take it out and that's going to be very infrequent. And then the other one is an in and an out. And if you picture it as like, you know, the way this building is designed in this, um, let me pull the screen up really quick. Um, you know, it's really seen as an arrival point in the, uh, I gotta get, grab the rendering really quick. Um, you see, you've got this, this box on the corner and, you know, we worked with Bob to create this, this signage entry. So there's a blade sign on the corner and this glass box here that's recessed back from the front of the building. And then you've really got this kind of story and a half uh you know almost double height uh pull under right so it's like it's functioning a little bit more like a luxury hotel where it's like you can pull off you can do some loading you can you know go in and, and pick somebody up or or whatever and and there's there's kind of a, a covered courtyard thing happening there and then a vehicle can pull out and there's still room for people to go into the garage and come out of the garage but it's a very organized traffic flow as opposed to uh uh, uh, just two, two two way curb cuts being adjacent to each other, right? So um, when you look at that in plan, I think that was on our uh, should have been in your packet here. You can see that it's you know, right. We're, we've we're kind of discounted that one and rightfully so because that's really just just a, a ramped curb to allow you to get wheeled stuff in there. Um, and then, you know, you're pulling off a chestnut coming into the building, you can get into the, the full garage circulation there and come back out if you want, or you can have a little bit of standing loading here uh, to um, to provide an amenity for the residents or Ubers or 
whatever is is temporary and going on right there where you need some temporary standing. Um, but it is a, a dedicated in and, and out. So it's not two 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 way traffic flows that are adjacent to each other. As far as the ones on Henry Street, I'll, I, I don't know as much about those or their adjacency. So are there are there other questions? I do have two more questions about the uh, plaza that's uh, on the station place um, level. Um, one is uh, in regards to the the bike racks. Is there um, any ability to put a like bike repair station next to those bike racks? As there are folks who like to take their bikes to the train station, be good for them to be able to reinflate their tires or you know do a quick repair with a screwdriver or whatever attached to that. All right. I can't sorry adam I, I can't speak to that specifically but i do know that there i believe there's a fix it station in the south norwalk train station um that was recently provided and they also upgraded the parking facilities recently uh fairly substantially inside the the parking garage on the um new york bound side okay right uh similarly in that courtyard um we saw the the metal curved wall before um is there uh, any ability to add a, a gap maybe in the middle of that to make it more inviting for folks to come into the courtyard instead of being uh, walking around, right? The courtyard is a is a public space. Is that right? That's correct. I, I believe there is some some permeation in it, but one of the things there is that's a, a one of the narrower parts. So in order to maximize kind of the the public private space, you know, and, and have you feel contained and safe. Uh, that wall, though permeable with the openings, is uh, a little bit more solid in the middle. I, I think you have a staircase in there, um, but it's mostly solid and you kind of filter more around the outside of that into the sunken plaza so that you feel, you know, separated from the traffic flow as, a part of, as opposed to part of it, you know, right? It's like it, it is going to be a relatively busy road. And even with the on-street parking, there's still going to be some larger vehicles traversing that. So you know, the public experience is really going to be better if you're a little bit more buffered from that traffic stream as opposed to a part of it. Is there a, a clear indication to someone who, you know, maybe is waking me up with friends to go to one of the restaurants or uh, whatever in the building um, for them to navigate from the train station into that uh, courtyard space? Uh, maybe I missed like where the entrances are because of that uh, steel wall there. Um, but just want to make sure that it's uh, inviting and, and clear that it is a, a public space that's accessible and not a, a private space. Oh, and you could point out that crosswalk. Yeah, so there is a crosswalk over here that kind of leads to this plaza in front of the, the retail or restaurant space here. Um, as far as wayfinding, I think it's a little bit early for that, but um, I'm sure the city or the, the developer could hang some banners from uh, the light poles and we could work on that. Uh, with them, uh, there is some signage shown here that may indicate uh, the stair, but the, the concrete, you'd, you'd naturally go across the crosswalk, find this plaza, find your way around the building to this plaza, see the stairs to go down. Um, so I, I think the, the overall signage package <laughs> and uh, wayfinding is, is a little bit early to determine all that, but um, obviously everybody wants the business to find them and, right. and it's i mean i don't think there's any issue with uh commissioner bryce a uh, condition I mean, we, we we haven't done the signage package yet and already one of the conditions or one of the recommendations in the report is to install a blade sign um on the corner by chestnut so is that there be a signage package and that it and that it uh you know sufficiently provide for wayfinding or whatever language verbiage you you know you're comfortable with but but that's fine from our perspective. Um, so um, uh, another question. So I'm, I was confused. Okay, in your earlier presentation, I thought you said that it was, even though it was public private, it was somewhat gated. Is, is Did I hear that correctly? That area that Chapin was referring to? No, that, that area is not gated? No, the that, lower that area is gated. The upper area is not. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? The, the low, the low, the this upper area that you're looking at on screen now is not gated. No, 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 the no. Lower the, area. The, the one with the fire pit and the one with people hanging out. Right. That area 
I mean, let me just be clear. That area is proposed to have gates, okay, but not to be gated shut unless that becomes an issue and it and it's determined based on how things are working that it should be gated shut at certain hours. But that's oh, not, I see. Okay, that's not the so, intention. So currently. that's for public use as well. Yes. Okay, and because I was thinking that the one next to it, the one kind of like with the metal fencing around it, I thought that one was the public space. They both are. They both are. Yeah. Okay, right. that's terrific. Okay. Uh, anything else before we close the public hearing? Uh, it, so if I can just say briefly, uh, the, I mean, I, I won't repeat the the special permit, all the criteria, it's in our application. I think we, we meet that. I, I will uh, simply say, I know there are some concerns that were expressed about uh, things that are important to commissioners. I'm not going to say there are little things, but that there are concerns that the, the development probably doesn't check off everyone's dreams for what could ever be for that location in terms of every component. But it, I think it certainly checks a huge number of boxes is a significant improvement from what's there. I mean, we create 20 units of affordable. There's none there now, right? You create a, a couple of public parks, essentially, where none exists. You create a, a courtyard now with easy access to the train station. Will it will it get everyone easy access? No, if you're you know handicapped and can't get up the stairs. But right now, there's there's no access. Nobody gets gets through. So it, it's a huge improvement over existing conditions in pretty much every respect. And so I, I, I hope that you'll you'll find that this is a great addition for a South Norwalk and putting the density where it belongs at the train station uh, and, and approve the project. Thank you, Attorney Blank. Uh, with that, uh, we'll- I think Darius had a question. I, I'm sorry, Darius, I didn't see your hand up. Uh, yes, it was just a, a quick question of whether or not the gate would be manual electric or mechanical? Well, manual, I don't think it's been determined at this point, but I most likely manual, potentially yeah. electric, but we'll we'll get to that as we detail that out. All righty, thank you. Okay, have I missed anyone else? I'm sorry, it's difficult with the, I can't see everyone. Uh, okay, can we put um, um, full screen? Yeah, let's do full screen, put this link down. Okay, that's much better. Um, can uh, we put up, uh, we'll close the public hearing uh, and we'll, we'll uh, move on to uh, action. Uh, can we pull up the resolution? Did you want me to go up to the beginning of the document or start with the conditions? I, I mean, I think we've all had an opportunity to read it. I think it it's it's uh, the the numbered requirements that we we want to look at. I I added a couple in based on the conversation um, you were just talking about, so I can show you those as well. Okay. Let me know when you're ready to, I'll, I'll just go down to the next block once you're ready. All right. I think it's okay to move. And I added, oops, sorry, jumped a little bit. At 14, I added, based on your discussion about um, curb cuts on Henry Street. Okay, good. Okay, should, we'll, I, should I specify Henry Street? Um, yeah, I think you ought to. Well, can we add in there about the rotary in the train station parking lot or turnaround? Well, what do you want to, what do you want to say about say about it, Tammy? M that maybe that TMP would reconsider it given the concern about all the buses going down onto Henry Street. 
especially with the school there and the people that live there having six buses an hour. Uh, is it the applicant that's doing this review or is it TMP? Uh, TMP. I'll get there. Okay. Well, hi, how, how can we involve TMP in this resolution? I'm sorry, Hector. I'm how, how can we involve TMP uh, within the resolution? Um, the staff the staff will take care of that. That work? I think so. Okay. Um, I I also would like to insert the one way the proposed one way of Chestnut Street that be reexamined. Yeah, that that hasn't even been approved yet. Um, right. I, I think I will. I'll do JJ. Is I will. Um, I'll talk to Jim Travers and maybe I'll we can have an offline conversation about where that's at and what they're talking about and why that might help a little bit too. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's let's move down. Uh, Twenty one. I uh, just added in about the wayfinding signage, um, but I got to fix that. It should be as you. Know. Yeah. Pete, is there anything about um, the remaining open questions with Bob's study or review? Is that further down? Uh, this is the end of it here. Um, it there. changed the revised dates. Uh, but uh, there were some questions that came out of conversations. Yeah. I fixed Henry Street. That was wrong. Um, well, you've 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 got you've got uh, uh, that number one Chestnut Street facade. Yeah, it's uh, all E. Yeah, looks as if you have addressed it. Yeah, like, yeah, I didn't highlight that one, but this one was new. Is there anything with the? Um siding that bob was um commenting on that you think is that's the very first, uh, the first one, one Nick. oh shit sorry <laughs> my eyes are deceiving me well it's late <laughs> and this is a question for the rest of the commission am i being like over hyper on this ada access to the internal park aspect i know i don't i don't i don't think so i think that's a weakness of the project um I I I think it's um, um, very unfortunate. So can we add something in was, here as a condition then uh, to be reviewed with TMP or something like that? Yeah, I mean, it really wouldn't be a TMP or, no, or, or whomever, Steve. It's really the, you know, can, it, it, it's a little tricky. It's either you tell them they have to install... Um, an elevator or you have them review the feasibility of installing an elevator to gain or, or what about a ramp? No, well, I don't think the if, ramp if it's clear a ramp won't work. Oh, yeah. okay. like I think maybe, an elevator, I, I, I an elevator of some sort is is uh the solution. So maybe. let them come back to us if uh they don't think that that's a uh or come back to you if they don't think that's a practical solution. Agreed. Yeah, I think. Something I mean, I think. I think it's a real weakness. It's a real weakness of of an otherwise really lovely project. Yeah, and I, what I can't get over is you're going to have the retail space up there, and if you're, you're assuming you know you have it accessible, you know during whatever commuting hours to use the elevator with it right inside the retail space, like it looks like it's very feasible now. Maybe you don't want people. There's other reasons you don't want people coming in that space. I don't know. I can't understand. Yeah. But like, I really advocate for this uh, and whatever str as strength of language as we can put in here, Steve, I don't know if we can say like they have to put in the elevator unless there's a real reason not. But, but Nick, um, Steve, Steve has put in language, which I think addresses that. 
Does, is this language too soft, Lou? So analyze the feasibility. You mean you would you prefer language that simply says they must do it? Do we want to? I don't know. Like I'm like uh, must do it unless there's a compelling reason not to. This reads as a they can look at doing it, and if the right engineer says it's too expensive, they get off the hook. Yeah, it sounds too much like a study. Is we that don't know what happens with that? Is that subject to like proving that to staff? Like, is that the the threshold? Um, I, I I think Steve is just changing the language. Nick, I don't understand what you mean about the retail would have an elevator. Well, I'm saying, I don't know if the the retail at the station level goes down to. I the think it does by level. the um, or it, it all connects. If you look at the arch, if you look at the site plan. The retail's on top and that's at the face level. And then it looks like there's, you know, either part of the garage or some other part of the building right underneath it. It's not a uh, a residential unit under there. But so, right. but if it's somebody's Maybe. retail space that's open, let's just say from, you know, nine to nine, are they going to want to have an elevator inside their Ooh. retail space to take people from, I don't know. know. I, I, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm stuck level. on that, Tammy. An, ele really... an elevator can be locked out. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not concerned with that. Uh, it's a simple key that uh, you know. When the retail closes, the elevator shut shut down. Um, I think this is fine. Can I have a motion? Well, I think Darius has his hand up to, to approve the resolution as it exists. Hold on, Lou. I think Darius had his hand up. Whom? Darius had his hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry, Darius. You're muted. It was better off that way because I forgot what I was. All right, you think about it, Anna. Yeah, sorry. I haven't um, been able to get uh, the ability to talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm also very concerned about the accessibility issue um, and would support as strong language as we can do. I think um, most retail, like they like foot traffic. I don't know, like should be a good thing, although it is uh, maybe unique. Um, and um, yeah, I would really, I would really support what Nick is talking about. Okay, and we have the language for that now. Okay, okay. good, okay. okay. Nick, you had something you wanted. Last question. To Do we need to put something in here about if the lower park is going to start to be gated in any way, if they're going to start closing that off with regularity or whatnot? I think Bob had some thoughts on that of getting some sort of, they need to come to staff that they're going to be doing that. Maybe you've already incorporated that, Steve, but um, I don't but, know what folks thought about, think about that. I agree. Uh, Steve, what about some language that asks them to detail for the staff what the implications of shutting that um, space off are? I mean, uh, is is it a safety hazard for for pedestrians? Uh, um, I mean, it doesn't sound as if it is because there's another way to get across there. Um, but maybe they ought to detail for uh, the staff, um, um, what the implications of that are, uh, and uh, you can come back to us if you if you think it's of concern. Yeah, Lou, I'm only just worried about it, it, it being cut off to the public at some point in time for some indefinite um, reason. Couldn't we just have it uh, comply with the same setup as our public, our other public parks, like just to dawn and expose? Mm. So I, I think it's, it's a difference. It's a private. Is, it's a private yeah. space, essentially. I, I, I that they're that. that they're opening up to the public. Um, I I don't want to trample too much on their on their rights. Yeah, let's leave this for staff to work on with 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 the developer. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I am too. Isn't that similar to what Ironworks has? That that area gets gated at one point, or they put a chain. No, I, I think if I understood the applicant, it, 
let's just say that there was the nefarious things going on after hours and the, the residents that live in the building were, you know, in harm's way that they would close it off. Well, I mean, you know, that's exactly uh, uh, the right uh, that um, uh, the the um, Cemetery Street project is is going to have. You know, there is a space which will be open to the public, but which they can close uh, should it become a uh, problem area. How's uh, how's 23? Yeah, if we can show me. Can you scroll to over a little bit? I, I think that's I think that's uh, about as far as I'd be comfortable going. Yeah. That work? Okay. I'm sorry, can I yeah. just speak to something uh, that you just said, Lou, about yeah. Cemetery Street? I just want to be careful that with these projects where we require a certain amount of public space, with, you know, which I know we did for Cemetery Street because of the um, the EVTC, the EVTC Z stuff, and I, I, I don't remember whether this one, how much of it was required and how much of it is extra, um, but that if it is something that's required, I don't think we should be automatically open to, but they can gate it off if there's a yeah, problem. I, I think requiring it means that like, they have to build it in a way that they can manage any problems that might come up. Yeah, um, this this isn't required. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So okay, the I just wanna keep that differentiation for the future. Okay. Yeah, Thank you, uh, I appreciate that. Can, can I have a motion to uh, approve the resolution? I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second. Galen has moved. Darius has uh, seconded. Uh, let's go to a vote. Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Pachas. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Rowena. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Yes. Ms. Langallis. Yes. Ms. Jordan Byron. Yes. Mr. Bryce. Approved, yes. Mr. Cantor? Yes. Ms. Wells? Yes. I almost called on Mr. Griswatz, but I will not. And Mr. Shulman? <laughs> yes. Okay, it looks unanimous. Okay. Uh, thank you all very much. Okay. Um, we have now the... Um, uh, hopefully we can do this quickly, appointment of a uh, nominating committee. Um, this is uh, complicated by the fact that um, I'm not authorized to simply appoint a nominating committee. Uh, I need the uh, approval of uh, the uh, vice chair, which is Mike, uh, and the secretary, which is Nick, uh, in order to uh, appoint a uh, committee. Um, I have uh, three names I'd like to propose. Uh, they are both fine with uh, those people, but I haven't had a chance um, because I didn't hear from Mike until the middle of this meeting <laughs> saying that he was okay with it. But uh, I'd like uh, to propose uh, uh, if if he's willing to serve Richard as uh, the chair of uh, the committee, um, Galen as a member of the committee, and Darius as uh, the third member uh, of the committee. For anyone uh, like uh, Galen or Richard who've served before, uh, this requires uh, maybe one meeting, maybe a meeting and a half, it's not a lot, it's not a big uh, time commitment, um, but it's uh, important to set the officers for uh, the coming year. Um, I will tell you that uh, uh, I can only serve one more year as chair if uh, the committee chooses to uh, nominate me. Um, I would be interested in serving that additional year because uh, I would like to see uh, the new regulations um, uh, go into uh, effect uh, uh, under under my leadership, if possible. 
Um, and I would say that uh, anyone else who is interested in serving as either as chair, vice chair, or secretary um, would uh, let um, Richard um, um, or uh, Darius um, or or Galen, uh, assuming they're willing to take on this responsibility, let them know of your interest and um, they can come back. They may be able to come back as early as our meeting next week, um, but sometime this month uh, with a, a recommendation, we'll hold an election and uh, the new officers um, will um, uh, take their office uh, first meeting in October. So first question, Richard, Galen, Darius, are you willing, willing to serve? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you for the consideration, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so to clarify, so they would be the nominating committee. They are the nominating committee, and as such, they cannot nominate any of their members. None of the three of them uh, can be nominated as officers. Those are our bylaws. Um, <laughs> And they would just, they would be nominating the position of chair and secretary. Chair, and vice chair, and secretary. Chair, vice chair, and secretary. And I'm sorry, I'm what, and Mike Mushak is currently the vice chair, and that's why Mike is currently the vice chair, but you okay. ought to know, uh, and I, I hope I'm not disclosing something I shouldn't, but Mike's term uh, is up at the end of the year, and he has uh, apparently expressed to the mayor uh, that uh, he doesn't wish to continue to serve. Lou, just refresh my recollection from last time. Um, how do we know who's interested in an office? office I'll, be, I'll be I'll be I'll be happy to share with you who I think would make good officers myself. Um, and uh, I think if people are interested in being officers, they should let you know so that you can. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. We 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 should expect somebody to tell us if they're interested in being something. I would hope so. And and I would also point out that uh, th these are not heavy burdens. Um, uh, their description of their responsibilities outside uh, of- in the, it's, 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 I've seen it in the bylaws. They're, they're described in the bylaws. Basically, uh, uh, the, the chair's job is demanding. I mean, I, I, I speak with the staff with some frequency. Um, I uh, prepare for uh, uh, the meetings. Um, and there are a whole series of uh, executive uh, functions uh, associated with it. But the vice chair and the secretary, the vice chair serves in my absence. I haven't and you're been, never absent. Exactly. And, I've ne and hopefully won't be. <laughs> But that's right. I I have not missed any meetings, uh, and uh, the secretary uh, on paper has some responsibility, but it's it's very limited. Usually, it's limited to just reading some material into uh, the minutes of a meeting. Uh, and are all all the terms are three years, Lou? No, the terms are one year. Oh, okay. Thank you. Just just a single year. Okay. I mentioned three years because if 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 I'm elected again, it's my third year and I can't serve as chair more than uh, three years no, okay. consecutively. Right. Got it. Thank okay. You. Well, I'm glad that's set. Um, it's a load off off my mind. Um, approval of the minutes of the August sixteenth meeting. <gasps> There a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Uh, Tammy made the motion. I'll Hector second. Hector seconded. All uh, in favor? I, I, I didn't get a chance to read it, so I'll abstain. Okay. That's fine. And I have to abstain. I wasn't there. Right. Okay. So um, uh, everyone's in, in favor with uh, the two exceptions. 
of uh, JJ and um, Richard. Uh, and comments of the director? No. Steve? <laughs> thank you. No, Briefly? thank you. Well, no, go ahead. Uh, you, you should say something about Any it. Any for yourself? Oh, oh, yeah. They, you did get, I sent out the email from the law department about the Richards Avenue appeal on the uh, the temple that you guys approved probably two years ago now. So that was uh, the neighbor's appeal was denied so they can proceed with the project if they so choose. That was before the combined commission, correct? I think right before. Yeah, yeah. Yes. right before. Yes, just for clarification. And I, I could be wrong, but I don't believe we've over been, ever been overturned in court. Um, um, and I'm talking about this commission. I'm not talking about past commissions. I don't. I I, I haven't seen one myself. So no. I don't believe so. Well, the big one was on Fellow Street, wasn't it? Wasn't it Fellow Street? Yes. Yes, mm. it was the mosque. Um, and I, I will not comment on that. Uh, yeah, we'll not. <laughs> One last item on the agenda. Comments of commissioners. Is next week's meeting a regular meeting or is it? A no, it's uh, another meeting at which I uh, will be discussing uh, the. Um, rewrite. Yeah, the rewrite. What's the uh, tour or the soup du jour for that meeting, Steve? What are we thinking? Yeah. Deep thought, Steve. We lost Steve. Yeah, we lost The ceiling can't stop moving. So. From chatting, with, I, I I believe the uh, intent is to go over some CD four W and five W uses, some more use table kind of uh, uh, ideas, and then maybe a couple looks at some map areas that might need to get cleaned up a bit. Will this be in person or um, online Zoom? Oh no, or we're with... still. We're still Zooming all our meetings. OK. Do you know when we're slated to come back to the Airbnb b, &B question since we got the memo from staff about it? Have you guys like mapped out for each week, like the topics for that week? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Steve wanted to do that next week. It's a possibility. I'm not sure if he had it like scheduled on the docket for it, but um, I guess we'll get some clarification tomorrow and let you all know. OK. And again, uh, because it's a special meeting, we'll limit it to just those two hours from six to eight. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous of seeing that time. So, sorry, Brian, then can you just clarify again? You said CD4-5 and what was the other thing? CD4-W and CD5-W, which are the two uh, like mixed use zones that are adjacent to the water. So the 4-W uh, area is the... Uh, First Street, Cove Ave area, and then the other CD4W is Rowayton Avenue, uh, specifically the Village District. And then 5W is that northern portion of Water Street and then up Commerce near Wall. Um, so we're just going to look at some of the uses, um, make sure that some water dependent uses are included as part of um, allowed uses in that zone. Okay, and you'll be sending us all of those um, areas. Yes, yeah. This, this coming week. Okay. Yeah, um, okay. I just I just got a um, uh, a note from Steve saying that Zoom keeps kicking him out, but but that's okay. We're Steve. we're we're finished Convenient. with business. So is there a motion to adjourn? Convenient I move excuse. That we adjourn. Oh, okay. I've got half ha half the commission has moved to adjourn. All those in favor? And the other half second. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we yeah, are adjourned. Friendly ghost. <laughs> See you all. See you all next. Thank you, Lou. Bye. Night, Bye. Thank Have you. a good one, everyone.